It's shutdown time, y'all. It's officially done made it here to Michigan. Midnight, we have to shut down. And I'm not ready for this shit. Like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. My ex asshole is all in Cali. And I was kind of laughing at them. Only because he exists there. And so now we glad that this shit is popping off here in the MI. And oh my, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Ah! So I already went and re -caught. I already got my weed together. I already know what I did with that big. It, it just feel like it's it right here. Yes. I already got me some weed. Look, this is my weed for the thing. <laughs> yeah, they talking about some. Uh, anyway, so look. Also, when I was going through my stuff, I wrote up a blunt that I didn't even know I had in the middle of my gun compartment. Was it my birthday or what? <laughs> so I don't even have to worry about rolling up. Extra time to roll up for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, before I get off into today's story... I am going to um, name off some things that's positive since the Rona came along that I noticed. And, you know, if it can apply to your life, try to apply it and think of things on a positive note and on the side, right? So what I'm doing now, since it's about to be midnight, I just want to do a ride and smoke because I don't know when the next time we can really do this shit. Right now, two weeks. I don't know. Lord have mercy. Ugh. Okay. So now look. I want to say this is a great time to get to know your kids. Yes, kids are out of school. They're at home, being homeschooled now. I know they still got you working. You calling your house every motherfucking 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, looking for somebody uh, to be on some bullshit so you have an excuse to get off work. But no, your kids are much gooder than what, well, your kids are much more well-behaved than you really think they are, okay? So, um, yeah, get to know your kids, see what they like, what they're into. You know, it's a time where we have no choice but to get to know each other and do it now um, while you have the electronics, you know. Put them down now because once they take away the electronics from us and the towers and all that go down, then you really be... You know what I'm saying? Having to get to know each other. So you might as well adjust into it so that when that time comes, it won't be no biggie on. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody sitting around talking and getting to know each other. And also, saving money. Yeah. Contrary to popular belief, I know everyone is going to stock it, but at the same time, <coughs> being in the house, you're not going to have to spend no money. I'm going out. You're not going to be spending no entry fees, those parking fees, those drink fees. You already bought your liquor, alcohol, um, you know, for a glass that they charge you for some wine. Shoot, that's a whole three, that's a whole six pack case. Okay, so yeah, make, um, take advantage of that and um, also besides saving some money, saving them ducats, let's see what else we got here. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, another good one. Zero percent credit. This is a great time right now to build your motherfucking credit and get your credit up. If you trust me to do a dispute, holla at me. I put uh, go to weed kinda. Oh yeah, you do my intro. Welcome to weed kinda, where we got all kind of weed. All right, and so if you would like your disputes to be erased, that's what I do. I clean it. Okay, I can't help build it, but I do clean it for sure. It does, I do do the long way process. It depends on how much you got, you know, the sticker, how your account is. But yeah, you go to weedconda at gmail.com and holler at me if you would like that, if you're interested in that um, side of the business. So yeah, I'm just a, as a disclaimer, I've already cleaned up my own. Let me tell you, how did I know how to do it? I ain't even gonna lie. Uh, the ex asshole I was talking about in Cali, shit, that motherfucker who came from the feds joints. And, you know, feds mean money. So, uh, he um, taught me, he sent me books on, well, he actually sent me a, a pamphlet on dispute and credit. And so, you know, and a lot of credit building trade lines and all that. So, he really educated me on money and stuff like that. So, you know, that's how I was able to learn how to dispute credit. You know what I mean? So, that shit worked. I've done it for my friend. I did it for him for free. He didn't really want to go through all the process. All he had to do was just sign his name and pay for the damn envelope and mail it off. That's it. I already filled out the envelope who to go. So all you had to do was just stuff the three papers to go to all the letters, go to all three credit major, three major credit bureaus, 
sign his name, his name at the end of the letters and send it off. His ass did it for so many letters and it stopped. But it did, I did clear off with some of the, uh, I think trans was easy to get clear. Trans usually don't uh, really give you no hassle. But, um, yeah. So, I raised it up to, uh, you know, it was more than what it was or whatever. So, I think it was like a 650 or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, hey. Now's the time to be applying for the credit. And the credit is 0%. So, they ain't going to be denying you. Yeah, some people may think, well, I'm proper credit. The bubble about to pop. But, hey, why not? Go ahead. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Go for that. Invest in stock right now. You know, the rumors of the stock market um, going up and down is true. Buy now. It's just like the real estate. Buy while it's low. Buy it's cheap. Because when the value come back, it's going to go up and you have more money. You know, turn your money. Multiply your money, right? So, um, also, last but not least, before I get into my story, the note going out at the midnight is going to make America so healthy. Yes, we are sitting there eating in the house, but not going out the midnight meaning no more McDonald's, no more fast food at the midnight, no more really greasy. And most people want to just be drunk, go to motherfucking sleep, exercise, go to sleep, watch TV, go to sleep. So, you know, hey. This is great. Let's see it shut down to midnight. I mean, no more binge. You know, America don't need to eat after midnight. I don't even know why they have the places open after midnight, to be honest with you. But I know different people have different shifts to work. And, you know, different people eat at different times. But, you know, hey. They just serve. They should just serve, serve for one of those times. But anywho, anyway, that's another story another day. Okay, let's get up into the... I want to do two stories. Uh, let's just see how long my um, first story lasts. And then we'll go to the next story, okay? Okay. So, um, this is the part two of the dog fight that I went to. And, as I told you, I was with a guy friend who, uh, we were finally able to start dating and hanging out. And so, we would date and then we would hang out and, you know, get to know each other and whatever it was. His ass just felt comfortable to surprise me and take me to a damn dog fight. And so, um, I told you guys the last story about how the dog was murked. How the owner kept flipping him upside down, crushing his skull, his head, you know what I'm saying, out of noise. I could still hear the crack, crack, crack. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, this time, he took me to one. He still didn't tell me, but... They were at night too, and it was an eye for us to hang out at night. But yeah, the the fights were at night, and this time the fight was actually across the street from my girl's shop. It was in a building that it looked like it was vacant, like it it was like black mirrors, like it looked at nice, but it looked like a, a nice store that that just left. But the store it looked nice or like that. But when you um, it was a high like a they showed they sold expensive clothes there. That's so they outside they they mirrors. Their window panes were like smoke black, like type of, the tent, the black tent. So you didn't really get to see in there or whatever. So we went in there when I'm like, okay, what's, what are we going up in here? When I seen this pull up in there, I'm like, what are we going up in here? Like, I never, I never went over there. And even though it's across the street from my girl's shop, you know, you just see the building. I never thought of my wildest years I'd be up in there. So uh, we go in and there's a bunch of people in there. Again, I see a ring. I'm like, oh God, here we go again, another dog fight. So, we go in, we see the ring, and, you know, they're wearing them puppies up or whatnot. So, um, I don't like to sit in the front row because it's just too close. It's not like it's a human fight. It's not like I'm going to see some humans go down. You know, these are um, animals. <laughs> okay with a mind of their own so I don't want to test that okay hoping that they have some logic in their mind alright so no sorry bro ham we got to sit in a little bit in the back let's get in the back a little bit so we're in the back we're um watching the fights it's boring to me ain't gonna lie yeah you see they all cock diesel pits 
But I ain't gonna lie, it's just not my thing. It's just, I don't know, it's too manly. It's just not cool to me. It's just not, I don't know, it's just boring to me or whatever. It's just like, oh, I don't want to see that. Like, oh, oh my God, like his teeth in them. Oh my goodness, like, really? Like, it's like that. It's like, you know, man, like, it's about past one, right? Only thing is fascinating there. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna hold you up. Only thing I can say that is fascinating in there is the amount of money that you see running rolling through there. I ain't gonna lie. All that money they have out there on the bed. Like, damn. Woo! Okay. Nothing like being around some rich niggas. <laughs> FYI. Oh, shit. Exit. That was the boys right there. Ooh, yeah, that was the boys. And I had my uh, light on too. Woo! But they had some freeway. Skirt! <laughs> Fuck that. Let me see. Yeah, they going down the freeway. Like that. I'm on the bridge now. I'm about to um, cross back over and get back home. But listen. So. <clears throat> and so, um, look. He got all this money, many friends and shit, you know? It's like, okay. And so, anywho, so the fight go on. So now this one guy, right? So now this one guy, his dog is fighting another dog. So his dog is losing, right? <laughs> so, you know, I have been wearing you know, wigs for a while. Like, this is the wig I have on. Like, I wear, I've been wearing wigs, but not like consistent like I have been lately, but back then, I used to play with them, put it like that. I mainly had sewn in. Like, that was my thing. Sewn is my thing. Well, the wig is just something I use, like, in between a sew in. Just put it like that. So, I was in between a sew in, and I had on, and then I wanted to use some color, so I had a blind, like, wig, right? But it had blind in it, or whatever. So, <laughs> We were watching the guy, the game, I said the game, the fight, and his dog is losing. So all of a sudden, all you hear is a meow, like a meow, like a loud meow. The dogs, both dogs just was like, just got off each other. Just like that, at the same time, simultaneously, both dogs stopped running, they like, Rrr. And I said, oh, shit. I just was like, and then all of a sudden, you know, they just bucked to the ring, y'all. When you see them running to the ring, that's when you get up. That motherfucker, both of them, leaped over the ring, y'all. Yes, I kid you not. Both dogs out the cage. Man. Both dogs go. Both dogs leap with a single bound. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, ah, I'm screaming to the top of my lungs. I am horrified. I, my heart is like, ah, bitch, what you got going on out there? We was just chilling and fine. Bitch, what's up? I'm just screaming. <laughs> Running. It's ladies that's in the front row. Wanna be cute? Wanna be cute in the front row? I said, no, baby. Uh-uh. You don't have me in the front row. I could be cute from a distance, right? <sighs> Them po' babies. They're running. It's two pits, guys. These pits are about 25 to 30 pounds, I believe, from my recollection, from what they were, you know, like the numbers they were throw off. Could have been 40 pounds. I don't know, but I don't think it was more than 40, though. Because, you know, I don't know. It was just how they, that was a nice ass house. It was just how they, uh, it was just how they were weighing. That's the size they were weighing. So, listen. When I say my friend, his boys, everybody in the house was gone, running to those black window panes. 
Okay. <laughs> Those back windows, we were riding to, we were in the back. The black windows in the front. We're in the back. Everybody running to the front of the glass. It's like a two-part door. Like you have a door that you walk in from the outside, and then there's like a little hall, like a little space, and then there's another door. And then you're in the and you're in the area. You're in the wide space. Um, everybody ran to that first door, like because you know to get out, like just to get in that little walk space or whatever. And close that door back. My goodness. Somebody. It was dark in that area, right? Oh, all the way front to the back and get lighter and lighter because that's where the fight is. But as soon as you get to the front, front it's dark and darker, so don't nobody see that is any best. There's people in there, you know what I'm saying? After hours, it gets suspicious, right? So, in the dark, y'all, I feel some go my wig, stocking cap. Oh, I said, I grabbed my hair. I looked around real quick to see who looked. One nobody paying me no mind. Trust you me. All I seen was heads like this. Looking straight ahead at the door. I'm never looking around ahead. And everybody like this, like on that, on that tip, like <laughs> seeking the outside. We're seeking safety. It's two wild fighting dogs. You guys and you're running too. The minute and the minute had no control over their dogs after that all i know is i seen the dogs outside and i just ran i didn't even i looked back but i at my time i got to the front end then your wig fell off and then you know all that they put my wig like because they you know they was just like how the people climbing on you like it was crazy i seen the back of the owner i was like oh my god do not bring me to not one more of these damn fights ever a fucking game their motherfucking pets was out for her. They wanted that cat. They are crazy. Like, this is the game. Like, shit people do. That motherfucker said, hold up. My money? My money? Oh, shit. Okay. My, my money? My money? That's what my little cousin used to say when she was with her. She was on the phone playing on my girl phone. This little side story. She was playing on my girl for well, we went to play on her phone. I was calling my girl. And uh she, you know, my girl and my little cousin, you know, she know my cousin. So she'll talk to me. My little cousin, she's very smart right that. So she's really I really articulate. So <laughs> my friend didn't answer, her voice went picked up. So my little cousin my three, so she talking baby talk. She like that, 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 that. Then all of a sudden, just clear, clear of the e motherfucker. If you ain't got my money, my money, oh shit! <laughs> I turned around and I'm, I'm in my room. She on the ground. She on the floor like this. You know how you got carpet on the floor. It's all pig and pleasure. She just on the wall. We just. Just in a room, just hanging out summertime. I'm in my mirror doing my hair or something. And I'm turning around. I turned around. I remember just turning around, seeing she was on the floor talking about. And her facial expressions was so serious. She was like, my money? My money? Oh, shit. I was just like, God, where did you get that from, girl? And I know she heard somebody say it because she, well, you know, they sponge and she was a parakeet, okay? Repeated everything. For real. Y'all, y'all know that was so epic. My friend, she cracking up. She had Verizon back then. <coughs> <coughs> She saved that voicemail, y'all. She saved that voicemail for as long as she had that service. I promise you. She, every time, every phone that she would get new, you know, it would still have the voicemail and it would be saved on there still. She never erased that one. She cracks up. She used to crack up. She let me hear the voicemail because it's one thing to be in the person. That's how I'm able to repeat it like I am because... I was able to see her do it, and then I heard the voicemail back. I was like, I don't know where that came from. She was like, why did she tell me that? 
place. She was just cracking up in disbelief. I said, bitch, she said if you ain't got it, how obviously you owe. Don't act like you don't know her because you owe her. <laughs> you feel me? Oh, my goodness. My baby was a trip, though. She was, oh, my goodness. Her, I ain't going to tell you all things she used to say. I ain't going to tell you what she said to my grandma. She came downstairs with makeup. She always played the makeup, right? Ever since she was like before one. It was like that. Before one, she played the makeup. And grandma came around like around four years old or something like that. And so from like before one years old to like, you know, she's like at that time before, she just straight played with makeup. Like when she come over, first thing she goes straight to the bathroom with a drawer of makeup and go play in it. Kid you not, it's just like routine. And it was like clockwork. It was like second nature or whatever. And that and going and getting in the tub. That's <laughs> what she did. She knew she had to come up and get in the tub. And she knew she was going to come back up. So she uh, came downstairs. Grandma visited. This is her first time really meeting her because grandma was out of town. But this is her first time meeting her in person. So she had a face full of makeup and she stood on there with her hips and said, What you going to do with all this? And my grandma looked at her. Our grandma looked at her like. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. And she's no, no, no. I said no, no. My grandma was like, I don't know. I got. I guess I gotta figure it out. That's what my grandma said. She said, Well, yeah. Well, you figure it out. You figure it out. I was like, Girl, come here. I was like, Why? Is you, what is wrong with y'all? Like, Mom, did you hear what she just said to her? My kids are something else. And I'm like, Really? I'm like. <laughs> I look how you got grandma thinking of you, girl. <laughs> Lipstick on and all. She was something else. She was something else. She used to cuss her other grandma out, though. I ain't gonna lie. She got her cussing from her mama said. She used to cuss her other grandma in the mouth. Cussed her out real good because she knew she couldn't run up the steps. So she had cussed her out and run up the stairs. And she knew she wasn't gonna chase her. Just a mess. And then when she got a little older, like seven, eight, she forgot all about it. She was like, I never cursed. I didn't cuss. I'm like, yes, you did. Calling people monkey ass bitches and all. Like, yes, she did. She called us a monkey ass bitches. I swear. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is what she does. She ran. She stumped up them stairs as a baby. I swear. I'm like, you know, she had, she had a bunch of ghetto cousins. That's all I like to say. She had a bunch of ghetto cousins over there. So she had exposure to that lifestyle, okay? Of the cousins. She used to come over there and freely. It did not, it only when she was pissed off, though. <laughs> it was only when she was pissed off. <laughs> and then that's like, that was also the crazy part about it. Like, she, she knew the context and to what to say it in. But anyway, okay. What's that? Twenty three minutes. Um, that ain't what I didn't want to talk about though. I was about to get into another story. I done talked about all my family and shit like that. Um, so this dog fight slash back down memory lane slash the first time I met Ti. We got enough motherfucking time. We twenty three minutes in. Probably another twenty minutes for this story. All right. So this was back. When T.I. was not as famous as he is today. This is before, like, I guess he was put on because, like, the crowd was like, <laughs> i just tell you the everything. So, I went out my girl. She got invited to a party, which was by a manager, a T.I. manager, whatever. His manager used to be here from Detroit or whatever, right? So, um, he... Invited us down to a club called Club Blue. And when we got there, this motherfucker had that crowd rocking. I ain't gonna lie. Even though, even though, even though two, two, two tip get on everybody nerves today, you know, this is the story. That nigga had that motherfucking shit rocking. And I'm like, dang, who is this nigga? Not even realizing, though, that we had to do a routine off of, but they wanted to do a routine off of, but we chose Fabulous. Dun, 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 dun. It was, I think we had, we had chose Fabulous, but they wanted to do a routine off of, um, I'm serious. Or whatever, but I didn't realize that that's who that guy was, or whatever, like that. Because this is some okay, so some years later, you know, fast forward, um, some years later, just a few years later, you know. Um, now my girl talking to this guy as a manager, he has an artist named T.I. Come down to the party club, blue, we in VIP. 
We go down there. I get to the club. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker. Like, the crowd is, like, really attentive, facing this nigga, rocking, jumping upside down. I'm looking at this guy like, who in the fuck is he? I'm like, who is this guy? I'm like, whoever he is, these motherfuckers, like, people like his ass. Like, people know his ass. Like, he done reach some people. I'm like, and I'm, I'm, I'm even more puzzled because I'm like, why the fuck I don't know who he is? You know what I'm saying? Like, huh? So, I was just, you know, puzzled by that. And, <laughs> and so, um, we're upstairs and we're mingling, you know, ain't no going down here. It's like a downstairs where the crowd was, the main floor is where the dance floor, and then it's upstairs VIP. Ain't no such thing as going downstairs, walking through the crowd because the whole crowd is like a damn they jump, jump, a daddy make a make it. Like everybody jumping up simultaneously, hands up and down. It's like, like it's like that. It's like a rock show. Like I ain't gonna front, I ain't gonna lie. The nigga had that crowd rocking left to right, and it's before he was even. You feel me? I'm gonna tell you the story because this shit's all coming back to me. Y'all can say I'm lying. I don't give a fuck. He can hear the story, and he gonna know it's real because I'm about to give D motherfucking tell. I'm about to get deets, and I ain't got no receipts, but I got the deets, and my deets is receipts. Bitch. <laughs> so now we upstairs. Never mind all that. We're mingling, okay? She meet her friend. Hey, how you doing? What's up? What's up? So, um, end of the night, right? You know, after the performance or whatnot, right? Um, her friend, which is his manager, is like. Whatever he says to her, she basically comes to me and like, do you want to go on their um, ride with them on a tour bus or something like that? And I was like, I don't even know if I said, yeah, I don't even know if I was in VIP or if it was downstairs and she's from today, but you know, anyway, I was down with it. <laughs> so, not knowing that saying, agreeing to that was going to turn into, oh, we have to fight through this fucking crowd fight through this fucking mob okay that shit's real alright I ain't no superstar I was with the superstar that shit is motherfucking real we're fighting through that crowd to get on the bus he is yelling stay tight stay together stay goes to me come on come on and we're walking up and we're getting on the bus and it's like wow it's like it just made my body just turn to the window and just look outside to see what I was looking at because it's one thing to see, the one thing to be walking through but then you're on a bus now you up in an elevated angle and you can look down kind of aerial light and then aerial view and then you know you can see like it's so many people, it's like a mob literally was surrounding his spot so I'm like who in the fuck is this guy you feel me i'm really awesome who in the fuck is this nigga girl you got me around and i'm like every because the reason why i'm thinking that is because i'm like everybody trying to get on this motherfucker i'm like everybody is literally trying to get on this motherfucking bus so we um on the bus. I look outside, look at the crowd in disbelief, trying to basically take it all in. That's why I'm able to give you the deets. And then I had on some white, I had on some white like slacks, like fitted. I was skinny too, y'all, so don't even go there. And so I had some uh, white slacks, like material, like they were like fitted, like um. Capri type light, you know, because that's what was about out back then, like Capri. And then I had on this um, flesh tone color, you know, halter with the, you know, halter around the neck, titties out, you know, the side strings, you know, back all out type shit with some like tan heels, you know, or whatever. And I forgot my girl had on. She probably had on some colorful shit. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> we on the bus, finally. Okay. Her manager guiding us. Y'all have a seat. 
So we're sitting down, and in the inside is wood. It's wooden. It's wooden walls. It's the wooden. It's like the table. It's like it's like you could. It's like a wood table, and he sit in one, and I sit on the other side. I cross like, um, like the manager of my girl was sitting across, and remember his friend who had um passed away in Ohio. He was like right here next to me to the left, and how we know it's him because you know. I'm jumping in front of the story right now, but I'll, I'll come back to that. But this just let you know that's who's sitting on the next to me, right? Okay. So, it is other boys across from us. Okay, then it's the highway, then across from us. It's his other boys and shit. They, um, they over there, you know, just chilling, talking, whatever like that. And, you know, everybody basically just sitting down. Everybody basically getting settled. We ain't took off yet. We still in front of the club. You know what I'm saying? Everybody come on, getting on, getting settled, and whatnot, right? And I think we was um we were sitting there for a little minute. Then we pulled off or whatever. So I hear who he is now. They say his name was Ti. I said like, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't asked no questions after that. You know, since the club or whatever, because I already see what's going on. Like whoever this guy is, this T.I. guy, he is Poppington, you feel me? I want to use that verbiage then, but you know, it is, he, he, it is what it is. He was he was a man, you feel me? So, we um pull off. We ride the shit and he go to his, he go in the back. Now, you go, it's, you go in the back and that's where his room and shit is. His room, like, 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 the bus was just a wood. It was like an odor, like, type of way. It wasn't no luxurious. Like, this is when T.I. was first coming up. You feel me? Like, he was already up because I remember his song. But, you know, but it's still, like, you got, okay, you do got one proper song buzzing. But, you know what I'm saying? Still, not everybody, you know who this guy is. But, at the same time. Not everybody know, but people getting hip. You feel me? Because that motherfucking club was rocking. You feel me? That motherfucking club was banging. I ain't gonna hold you up. So, I was a slow one. But my girl, she ain't know who he was either. But shit. We learned that night. So, he, um, go in the back or whatever like that. He... They got, they got music playing. He likes to listen to old school music. That's what he was playing with some old school shit. You know uh, what I mean by old school. Okay, what I mean by old school is if someone was to be playing Ozzy Brothers or some motherfucking, what? Some, uh, like some Johnny Guitar Watch, some Gap Band, some, some Zappa Rogers or some, like, uh... Who the fuck else they got old school? Like, something in those categories. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> That's what I mean by old school shit. So, he was playing, you know, grandma and grand. Well, I ain't gonna say grandma. No, grandma listen to that shit. Um, anyway, he was playing old school jams and shit. And so... Shit, everybody was just kicking and chilling. And then so he got he come out, he got on his wife beater on, and he got his boxer shirt on, and he got his socks on and shit. And he got a scar up his leg, up the back of his leg. He had a long scar, but I think it's up the left leg, I'm not sure. But the only reason I remember that is because I got I remember climbing up the fence when I was a little girl and I had a long scar like that on the back of my leg. So that's what made me like, oh okay, like weird how they just clicked and connected right so we listen to the audio and then i was like okay so i think he had a cd or something or like a, a oh no it wasn't even a cd i was like let me get your autograph because you know we're riding oh we i think we went to the liquor store i don't think we went to the liquor store yet no we didn't but i was like let me get your autograph or whatever like that and so i think it's towards the end of the night when i asked for this though and his homeboy the guy who was from you know who passed away in ohio or whatever he was uh helping me like trying to get me trying to find me something to write on write with uh, I think I had his CD or something like that and I think we and we we couldn't find nothing so I was like well let me have your rubber band 
because he had some jewelry on. He had on some. Okay, well, this is bring another deep to the story. T.I., he used to have on some gold nuggets. He used to have on gold jewelry. I think he had the hair. I think it was a thick hair and bone he had on. But I know for sure his rings. See, this is what I mean by nugget. See, like this right here? This is a nugget. You feel me? Like that type of shit. He had on a ring. He had on some nuggets on his ring. He had some gold jewelry on. That's what I remember. And I remember he had on some rubber bands on his arm. And I had asked him if I could. I said, well, let me just have your rubber band. And so he, he extended his arm and he let me take it off. And I put it on. And then, you know, they went to the liquor store. They ordered what? I think he got some. He got some. I remember he got some Malibu, some pineapple. And I don't know, he got some, I don't know, was it uh, some Don Julio maybe? Yeah. But I remember for sure, for sure, some Malibu and some like pineapple shit. I believe it was some Don Julio he had was drinking on. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think he had got dropped off at the, like the, um, because we ain't going to his room or nothing like that. I don't let that be clear. He got dropped off at his uh, room. I think it was like at the Anthenium or something like that. Um, yeah, I remember that. And what else? Shit, that's really pretty much the deeds to that. I remember, like, right after that, though, right? Like, a month later, right? A month later, I turned on the TV, y'all. This nigga was on. It was his video playing, right? And guess what it was? Who I me is Rubber Band Man. Why, Mr. Taliban. So I was like, Rubber Band Man. And <laughs> this bring another part back to the story. I went to my room. This also was a time where my uh, around the time my cousin was just young. She was around. She was young around this age too. Who I was talking about. I had went to my room. Cause I remember when I got home, I, I just took his rubber band, I put it in like a, I had a pottery like, a uh, design pottery it was like painted, and I used to, um, you know, like, yeah, pottery, some, you know, ceramic like, and it was designed flowers on it was colorful, and I used to put like knickknacks and stuff in there, like buttons or some our pins or stuff like that, right? So what I did was I put his rubber band in there, right? And so it just so happened to be in the window, and it was a summertime. So by the time I went back, cause I'm like rubber band man, he popped his rubber band in the video and shit. I'm like, ah, I ain't even know he called himself the motherfucking rubber band. I'm up here asking this nigga for his damn rubber band. I said, you kidding me? And then I was thinking to myself, like, was I, did I inspire that song? Or was that song already made? Probably was already made, but if it was, that's crazy how my idea is to think of, well, since I can't get an autograph or nothing like that, because I see you popping, like, just to say I was around him or I met him, you know, shit, fuck it, let me get your rubber band. <laughs> and he sure did have one. That was his only rubber band he had on, too. That was the only rubber band he had on. He had wore one rubber band. You wore one rubber band, T.I., on your arm. And I went back to my little pottery thing where I held the rubber band at. Y'all, why was it melted? <laughs> it was melted and emo fucking and hard and it broke. And I was like, oh, I'm going to. I was like, it's over with. It's a wrap. I ain't going to keep this. And plus, rubber bands, you know, they don't get old and stuff after a while anyway. So, that probably, I wasn't going to last. <clears throat> so... You know, but hey, the memories did, right? And the memories here for me now. We got YouTube, and now I can just tell the story about that. You know what I'm saying? Hope it's interesting to you. It's all true facts. And these, look at these motherfuckers. Ooh, right here. An accident right here, y'all. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying, though? See what I'm saying, though? Motherfuckers. Damn, he got my guy, too. Damn. Damn. Look, they about to look who did that. They mad. Damn. Hey, she fucked her shit up, bro. Hey. See? Got to be careful in these streets. Everybody motherfucking irritated. Trying to hurry up and get home. It's 12 o'clock. Motherfucking curfew and shit here in the Michigan, the D. You know what I'm saying? Niggas getting the accidents and shit. 
and I'm right here to cover this shit live, fresh, you feel me? Um, yeah, so shout out to T.I. Rest in peace to homeboy too, because right after that, um, when we learned that his homeboy died, and when I seen a picture of his homeboy, I called my girl like, bitch, it wasn't that, oh boy, she was like, yeah, and y'all, it's so crazy, because I just thought about another part, because that part made me think of the rest of the story, so T, I was digging on my girl, so he liked her, he thought she was cute, her dumb ass, and how do I know, because T, I kept telling me, hook him up, tell your girl I want to talk to you, tell your girl to talk to me, and so she, being a pygmy, a dusty, <laughs> so no, not literal sense, but being a pick me though, um, she ain't no dusty for real, for real. But I'm just saying, like, that was a dusty mind frame of thinking. I ain't gonna lie, that was a dusty mind frame thinking. Come from she was talking to the manager, so she can't do that. I said, bitch. After I seen what the fuck I seen with my eyes, I said, bitch, fuck that nigga. You, y'all, why after that? And he kept on, and I knew he liked her even before he even told me because I kept seeing the way he was looking at her. You know what I'm saying? I kept seeing the way he was looking at my friend. I said, oh, he won't hurt. But he couldn't really make his move because, you know, the manager is the reason why why we're on the fucking bus. You know, we're the only two motherfuckers out the club besides his entourage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who got on that motherfucking bus? It was it. That was all. And so, uh, oh, yeah, then you tell me to hold the drink. Tell me something, yeah, uh, help carry the damn, uh, y'all know y'all probably say leave that part out, but I can't be, I can't leave that part out. Look, he wanted motherfuckers to help his ass. It was a lot. We did. He did order. They did order a lot. I ain't gonna lie. It was a lot. And it was a lot of shit to carry. So, dang. What the fuck? We were all rolled together. He's down to earth. You feel me? He was cool as fuck. That's what I can say. He is motherfucking down to motherfucking earth. I don't know what's going on with the T.I. today. But I know back in the day, he was down to motherfucking earth. Okay? But yeah, he was digging in. He just let it be known. Like, as he let draw, let him talk to me. Like, hook me up with your girl. It's only me and her, you know what I'm saying? He's like, hook me up with your girl. She wasn't having it. Then, motherfucking, his ass came again. And this time I didn't go. Her and another girl had went. They were at the, uh, it's not, it's now called, it was a Poncha Train Hotel. He had a room up there. He was trying to talk to my other girl then. But, you know, that's what they said. That's the story they came back with. I wasn't there, though. But, um, yeah, I was telling my girl, I said, bitch. And then all, then all of a sudden, we seen Tiny, Tiny and Toya. Her shit came out some years later. I said, bitch, that could have been us. That could have been our motherfucking show, bitch. See what I'm saying? You playing, you play, ho. You played us, bitch. Your stupid ass. He, 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 he. And he, 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 my ass, bitch. Ho. All I needed was to be the friend to come up and come on with your ass, bitch. I just, that's all I needed to be, A. Hey, tell the weather stories. A, hey, when we first met, I had a girl. I told her I wanted to hook us up. Took her, you feel me? Lovely story. I could have been included in the wedding. But no. But hey, what's meant to be would be. <laughs> and God gave him beautiful Tiny with their beautiful children. By the way, my sister, they always talk to my sister look like Tiny. In a way. She do, but she don't. Like, but for my sister, she's, they're both pretty, but, you know, my sister was cute, cute. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, so. <laughs> she look like what she don't got, you know what I'm saying? All her features look like that. So, yeah, that is the motherfucking story. And, so, I gave y'all three stories. I gave y'all for a, I gave y'all the Rona benefits. I gave you guys part two of my of a dog brawl I went to. Uh, back down memory lane with the fam. Okay. And I gave you the first time I met a millionaire. I was around a multi million. That's how I know I'm Justin. Because I already done bumped shoulders with one. You feel me? At least hands to, act, to, to wrist. <laughs> At least bump wrist with sick hands. You feel me? <laughs> with one so hey i know i'm destined to be one and i ain't the only man there of course i've been around just teasing just teasing i'm just jabbing take it all right you guys you guys i want you to have a good night love you